Hi, I'm Ernie Conover. French polish is a finish that's been around for centuries and is still very popular amongst period furniture builders. So I thought it only proper that we apply French polish to a small Queen Anne tea table that I have just completed. Traditionally, a French polish was started by applying a coat of mineral oil, which you can buy in any drugstore yet today. You simply saturated all of the wood with mineral oil, and this brought out the color in the wood. The problem is that after you apply the actual French polish, which is shellac applied with a pad, the mineral oil would bleed through the finish and you had to every three to five days remove that oil with naphtha. So the process was kind of long and involved. Today we have the advantage of being able to apply Waterlock's original sealer finish instead of mineral oil. And this will seal the work, will bring out the color of the wood and be a perfect foundation for our French polish. Simply saturate your cloth with the sealer finish and wipe it on. And wet like this, you're getting very much the effect of what the finish will eventually look like. The wood in this piece is Santa Domingan mahogany, which is what the colonials at Williamsburg and all along the East Coast would have used in the late 16, early 1700s. Don't be afraid to be very liberal with your application of the finish at this time. Keeping a little piece of sandpaper handy to hand sand any rough spots that you encounter as you go along is really wise. And with the oil on the wood, it will sand much better. While our coat of original sealer finish dries, it's time to make up some shellac. You cannot get a good French polish from pre-mixed shellac in a can that you would obtain at a hardware store. You have to make it from scratch from shellac flakes. Shellac is a secretion of an insect that lives in Asia. It's gathered and then refined. And it ranges in color from super blonde that you see here all the way up to garnet, which is quite dark orange. What color you choose to mix is largely dependent on your taste and the type of furniture you're finishing. This is a pound of super blonde that just came in the uh, mail. And I've put some in a glass bottle here. And this is denatured alcohol, which is the vehicle for shellac, it's what it dissolves in. And we simply want to cover it a little bit more than cover that with alcohol. And we're gonna mix that up a little. And now we need to let that sit for about 24 hours for this to dissolve. And we're really making a super saturated solution of shellac, which would be the equivalent of about eight pounds of shellac dissolved in one gallon of alcohol. I like to set it in a sunny window where it's a little warmer and the sunlight seems to make it dissolve a little faster. And when I walk past uh, that window, I usually will kind of stir it up a little bit. But in 24 hours, I will have a very pure shellac. Now that uh, our water locks has dried a full 24 hours and the shellac has dissolved completely into the alcohol. We're going to take some of this rather full strength shellac, it would be about an eight pound cut, and simply brush some on our piece. And we want a fairly heavy coat. You work shellac if you're brushing it with a full brush and you move quickly and you don't brush over things a lot. So as you can see, I'm working fast and evenly. The main thing is to not be too concerned that you have too much finish in some places. We'll correct all that in the next step. A great money-saving trick to wash your 
brush after you're done spreading shellac is just to take a little household ammonia and simply put the brush down in there and work that ammonia into it well. Now take it to a faucet and run cold water over it and it will remove all of the shellac, leave it cleaner than you can get it with alcohol at a fraction of the cost. Well here we are 24 hours later and our shellac is nice and dry and it's now for the next stage of our French polish which you only have to do with open grain wood such as this satin Domingan mahogany or oak. Maple for instance is fine enough grain that I eliminate this step quite successfully. But what we're going to do is barely saturate a piece of cloth that has a lot of tooth to it. It's a coarse weave structure. This is actually a piece of a broad cloth shirt that got a little old and worn and became a good cloth for this process. And what I'm going to do now is sprinkle a little pumice stone on the piece. I have this piece of cloth barely damp with denatured alcohol and I'm now going to rub in circles and the damp alcohol is picking up that pumice and this is acting like about 220 grit sandpaper and making that pumice bond into the shellac that we brushed on. It's smoothing everything out and the pumice is actually filling the pores of the wood. We're actually making a wood filler that is shellac, mahogany, and pumice. And as the finish works into that pumice, it'll become invisible. So I have to do this to the whole piece and we have to wait at least a few hours and we can start the actual French polishing process. Well, our pieces have had about four hours drying time, so we're ready to start the French polishing process. And to do this, I have a fresh, clean glass jar here, and I have our original super saturated solution that we made up by covering flakes with denatured alcohol. I'm going to pour about half of that off into this second jar, really decanting it. I don't want any debris or anything that's settled to the bottom to come over. And I'm now going to dilute that about 50%, maybe a little bit more, with denatured alcohol. I'm going to sort of mix that up a little bit. And I'm going to take some mineral spirits and I'm going to put a teaspoon or a little bit less of mineral spirits in there. And that will help us quite a bit in the French polishing process because it will make it so our applicator doesn't stick as much. Originally the French would use a little bit more mineral oil on their application pad as they did this process, but again that has to bleed out and is harder to clean up and the finish doesn't dry quite as fast. Mineral spirits gives us that glide we need but evaporates very, very quickly. We're going to now make up the pad. I have here a piece of linen. Linen is the best material for this. However, a good uh, coarse weave of cotton will work very well too. I don't think diapers are a very good applicator, but something like a broadcloth shirt that I used to just now makes a great applicator. I have here some felted sheep's wool. I'm married to a weaver and spinner, so I have a, a lots of scraps of linen and felted sheep wool. I'm kind of lucky in that regards. People use cotton, but the problem with cotton is that it just balls up into a tiny ball and it doesn't have any loft. This sheep wool, as you can see, just pops right back to where it was, so it holds a lot of material as we do this. We're now going to take and pour some of this shellac mixture we just made 
into this pad and we're going to wrap it up in this cover and just hold it like that. If we beat that against our hand, we get it starting to come through. We'll now take our piece and we'll start a slow circular motion like this, applying some pressure. And you can see that I'm leaving a coat. I'm a little bit too thick. The whole process works on the viscosity of the shellac. You want to be working just ahead of the tack rate of the shellac. And sh shellac tack dries very quickly. I've added a little bit of al alcohol to that applicator to thin that shellac out in there a little bit. Again, I'm going to do that. And you can see it came through a little more readily. Oh, I'm doing much better now. Slow strokes. I never stop anywhere. I always come off in an airplane stroke, like an airplane taking off and landing. I come down and off like that. And the whole secret of this process is to have that shellac at the right viscosity in there and to move your applicator at the right rate that's just ahead of the tack rate of the shellac. I'm already building a very good film here. Good light is also a great benefit to this process. I'm holding it into that corner a little more. Lightening my strokes just a little bit now. I'll do the underside of that in a few minutes and move on to the next piece. On larger pieces of furniture, you can usually sort of start at one side of the piece and work your way around. And by the time you're to where you started, you usually can do a second coat. Three coats is the most you can do without letting it dry for a number of hours. But you can see how quickly this is all coming right up nice and bright. Shellac is what you call an evaporative finish. That is that we dissolve the material, shellac, in the alcohol. And so each coat of this that we put on dissolves the last coat a bit and becomes part of it. It becomes one continuous film. The other finish we have that's like that today is lacquer, which to me has a very plasticky look to it. Shellac has a much more natural look. But either finish is very repairable because of that fact that each coat melts the last one a little bit. A lot of people think this finish is slow. I don't consider it any slower than putting varnish or water locks on both. Any good finish requires a fair amount of work. You're going to have to sand between coats. You're going to have to uh, keep everything clean. I have paper down on my bench, a fresh piece from the last time, so that I both protect my bench and I protect the piece from any dust that's around here. I also vacuumed everything before I started this process. And I'm sort of being my own lathe here, turning this in my hand as I come around here. But you notice I never leave the applicator still on the piece at any time. I'm always moving with it and lifting away immediately. And that's one of the secrets. The other is if it starts to stick too much that you've got to thin the shellac down. If you're not building enough coating, then you've got to thicken it up by adding our letdown mix right there. Shellac dates to the 1600s, but it really started to be the finish of choice in the 1700s. And suddenly they had a finish that was transparent, would bring out the beauty of the wood, and wouldn't go dark and ugly in a short amount of time. And because of the way you apply it, they could do it in a dusty shop at the end of the day 
and by sort of opening the windows and blowing all the dust out, they could uh, apply this and it, again, was tacked dry fast enough that dust in the air didn't affect anything. And just as I said, I can come back over here now to this piece and I can start another coat. Well, this should uh, do it. We'll have a finished piece of furniture here very shortly. I've got my applicator out. I'm going to put a little more shellac in it. And just a touch of alcohol. And now, this is it. Oh, coming up beautiful. Those airplane landings and takeoffs with the grain. This very final coating, working around that rim. Beautiful. Now I'll go on to all of the other pieces. And very shortly, with a little drying time, I'll be able to glue the legs to the pedestal and attach the top. And I can sit for a few minutes and admire another piece of furniture before I go on to the next one. Give French polishing a try. I think you'll like it. Hi, I'm Kelly with Waterlax. Thank you for watching. We hope you found this helpful. There are more videos and guides available at waterlax.com support. With passion and pride, we've been making Waterlax resin modified tongue oil wood finishes since 1910 by hand using only the very best ingredients along with our original family formulas. Whether it's our original or marine formula, we have a product that's perfect for your next wood project. To us, there is nothing more rewarding than preserving the authenticity and inherent beauty of wood, which is why wood enthusiasts everywhere choose Waterlax. Let wood be beautiful.